what's up guys welcome back to the channel today is going to be a video that's going to catch a lot of you guys by surprise we're not going to be talking about the 6-7 today but we are going to be talking about the new project right about five months ago i sold my 99 7 3 power strokes i had the 6 7 i didn't need a 7 3 anymore and i thought i was going to be done with these things forever but i kind of missed having one really these 7 3s are probably one of my favorite trucks so that brings my newest purchase what you're looking at is a 2000 f250 single cab long bed 7 3 and there's going to be some stuff on this truck that i think a lot of you guys are going to like this is really a one-of-a-kind kind of truck it it's a little beat up we'll go over that but it's nothing that can't be fixed right here you can see we'll start off we got the back bumpers a little pushed in tailgates honestly pretty nice looks like the bottom might be a little bubbly though so i'll probably end up getting a new one this is going to be my new project come spring this is going to be my daily i'm going to be parking the six seven here in a few months once it starts snowing out because i don't want that boy getting rusty and this will be just getting driven every day through the winter and I'd like to fix up the body, whole new paint paint job. As you can see, this thing from a few feet away looks stupid clean, but unfortunately there's your your little BS. We got like uh, some rust here and there. Bad rails are a little crusty. The frame is not bad at all for the age. It don't really even look that scaly under here. We got, uh, it looks kind of skinny back here. I was told it was a five inch exhaust. I just picked this truck up last night in the dark. So anyway, it does have an eight inch temp though. So I guess that's pretty sweet. We got the 11 through 16 Lariat stock wheels on there. Transfer tank up here in the bed. That's going though. It's just in here for now. And right here, I'm gonna get into what you guys are really gonna like about this truck. Let's walk around to this side. As you can see, bumper's a little messed up. Probably replace the bumper and the headlights for sure. I plan on leaving the bug guard on there for now, but it's not gonna be permanent. This right here is what you guys, there's gonna be two things when I open this door that you're gonna like. Right here, you can see the obvious. It's got these 08 seats in there. Looks like I need to fix this vinyl floor. But then this right here is where it starts getting cool. We got a ZF six speed transmission, which this will be my first ever manual transmission truck. I almost slipped up and said something in a clip earlier where I was talking about driving it around a little today after I bought it last night. And I gotta say, it's a lot of fun to drive. As you can see, yeah, the rockers are bad. Nothing I haven't fixed before. But I was a little apprehensive about getting a manual at first just cause I've never had one. I know how to drive them but I've never actually owned one and driven it daily on the road. And I've got to say, in all honesty, it's a lot of fun going through the gears in this thing. It isn't a race truck by any stretch of imagination, but honestly, just cruising around going through the gears is pretty fun. As you can see, we got condensation. The heat and AC in this thing were great. I haven't tried the heat personally. This is my cousin's excavation rig actually. So I know the truck's history and I've been in this thing in the winter. And it's had warm ac and the ac will freeze you out on the minimum setting which is nice because most of these old rigs don't have it in addition to that you're going to see we got the manual t case on the floor so it's kind of cool about this versus my new one is the new one has everything electronic this you got your mechanical 7.3 motor your manual transmission your manual transfer case it's like everything on here is pretty much built to last we got your probably o'reilly's cheapo radio i don't really care about that but i guess it's nice to have we got a new fuel filter for it right here you're seeing in the passenger seat this is kind of the the kryptonite of this thing is we got a new oil pan for it because of course it's gonna need an oil pan it, it leaks pretty good i'm not 100 percent sure if it's the oil pan the guy he bought it from like a year or so ago now gave him an oil pan with it and said that's what's leaking i'm not sure he just added oil here and there and drove it. I don't think it leaks that bad. I'm about to put it in the shop tonight and let this thing sit and see how much oil we're looking at. If it's maybe not that bad, I won't fix it, but there's a good chance of me trying to maybe pull the motor on this thing. I've never pulled one on a 7.3, but I've done it on the six liters. Uh, I guess I'll talk more about that in a second. Right here, what you guys are gonna like even more when I said this is one of a kind. So we got the manual trans. 
and up here on the dash you're reading that correctly 103,000 original miles had I believe 96,000 when my cousin bought it hasn't given him any issues yet but wow like what a rare find you don't see many 100,000 miles seven threes anymore you don't see many stick shifts you don't see many they ain't all beat up I mean this truck you know you got some rust here and there but if we step back for being a truck that came out of Ohio this is honestly kind of clean I give or take I know it's not perfect and I know I'm gonna have to replace a lot of panels actually I was assuming I'd have to fix the doors maybe they don't need doors I'm not sure I'll have to see how they look after this winter the front fenders are good at least so yeah that's what's kind of cool about this thing is 103,000 miles on a 7.3 power stroke is kind of hard to find, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know. And a, a single cab stick shift is hard to find. Right here, you can see what we got going on. Pretty basic engine bay for now. I plan on keeping this thing mostly stock because, as you can see, we got stock turbo. Looks like we got a sick aftermarket air filter. I don't care about that. But then everything else under here looks to be stock. I do see whatever this box is right here. I can't remember the term for it, but that looks like it's been replaced, which would make sense being how good the AC works. So that's kind of nice to see, you know, it isn't all cobbled up with a huge turbo and fuel system beat to shit. You know, it's still the original stuff, which it makes me kind of want to keep it like that. As cool as some of the performance stuff can be, you really can't beat your, uh, stock reliability on a 7.3 especially being this slow mileage so not a whole lot of story to tell under there he was told that it has a an aftermarket clutch in it i guess i couldn't tell you i don't know much about manuals at all i've only been actually driving a manual truck now for a, like a couple hours i've been just cruising around so i'm not going to start dailying this yet we got to uh do some work to it i'd like to get newer mirrors newer headlights i already said the headlights earlier but here you can see the interior it needs a cleaning i'm not gonna lie but even like the cab corners are pretty solid this is a 2000 model so it's had 23 years of salt caking up under there and it still ain't rotted out so i can't complain right here for our tunes it came with this when he bought the truck and it's been sitting in here ever since we got an edge tuner this thing looks absolutely ancient and it's weird seeing an actual tuner for a 7.3 versus your standard chip and uh, I think actually there's one in here. We don't know what the deal with this is, but right here we got a, uh, I want to say this is like a part of a TS6 position chip. Power tech, but there's no like cable or knob for it. So I don't know what to say about that, but we don't really care about that. When I was driving old red, I ran the hydro tuner on it and I wouldn't use any other tuner i wouldn't run a ts6 and i would never run something like this in there because it's an auto but these manuals it doesn't really matter because there's no trans tuning like there is an the automatic it's just the manual gearbox so you can run whatever tunes you want but i guess maybe i'll plug this in one day and see if it'll say what tune i'm currently in it seems to run really great in that tune though but anyway so we got this oil pan in here as you can see unfortunately we got a little bend in there i'm hoping i can maybe straighten it out we'll see about that though and I got to see, I know they talk about these dipstick adapters leaking. I'll have to maybe take it apart and make sure the O-ring's in there. So I guess if maybe some of you guys want to let me know in the comments what you can say about that, you know, if it's as hard as it was on the 6 liter to pull the motor. I watched a video on it. It doesn't seem like it. And I know a lot of guys do uh, in the chassis oil pan repair where you basically jack up the motor a little bit. But I've, I've heard that on the on the manuals, it doesn't work the same. And even on the autos, they were having to jack up the cab and have it on boards and shit. And it just didn't look like a fun time. So depending on the severity of the leak and if it's the oil pan, I got to figure out what's all leaking. I might go ahead and pull the whole motor out, degrease everything, clean it up, and see what we're working with and maybe do some other stuff. I know they talk about, obviously, we got the oil pan, maybe... Uh, Rear main, front crank, oil cooler seals, maybe H-pop seals. I might do uh, uh, the up pipes for the turbo, probably glow plugs. This thing fires right up in the in the cold. It don't matter. There's been times. The only time this thing didn't start 
as it was like freezing, freezing and the fuel gelled up and he went and got a new fuel filter for it and put it in. It was good to go. But anyway, I guess I'll fire this thing up. I'll do, when I take the motor apart, I'll probably do the glow plugs just for the hell of it while I'm in there and maybe the under valve cover harness. But I guess you guys can let me know in the comments what all you think I should do to this if I actually pull it out. I just want preventative maintenance. I'm not looking to get the biggest injector set and the biggest turbo and a wicked wheel. I want to keep it original since it's got such low miles on it. There we go, fires up. There's your sick radio. I'm not a big radio guy. I couldn't tell you if this thing has door speakers in it or whatever the hell. I guess some of you guys maybe are into that. As long as the radio works and it doesn't sound all blown out, I don't care. I kind of like the newer seats though. I feel like with the color scheme, it kind of looks good in there. I got. I want to get that sorted out though. It looks like the lumbar support thing's missing. We got, this is missing. And the wiring under here is pretty comical. I need to clean this truck guys. So ignore that. But we got these wires here going to the, the seat motor. If I touch these into a, wallet battery for an impact i was able to get the seat to move to where i want it it was all the way back before and i was going to wire it up but i don't really need to have the seat movable i just leave it where i leave it and i just wanted because before i had to like reach my foot all the way to hit the clutch and to shift which is kind of a nuisance so we got it straightened out now though step back give you guys a walk around not bad for being a 2000 i like it I'll be cruising this all winter. We got a... Uh... All right, guys, so it's about 20 minutes later. As you can see in that last clip, it started bugging at the end because my phone was getting low, and then it died. I was saying it has a cab light out as well as the turn signal on this side quit working. I'm sure it's just a bulb. I've had this happen before on other vehicles, so I'm going to try getting a bulb for that and hopefully just a bulb for the for the cab light, even though whenever I go ahead and get the mirrors and the headlights, I'll get clear cab lights too. But for now, it'd be nice just to have them working. So that pretty much kind of sums up this new truck purchase. And uh, yeah, I'm sure I'll be making a bunch of videos on this thing, working on it, cruising. I know the a lot of the videos I have on here that did really good are with the uh, red truck sound clips. I'm sure I'll be making videos driving around like GoPro, POV, manual driving, stuff like that, since I know the ZF6 trucks are kind of cool. So, yeah, with that being said, I got her in here in the barn. We'll see. This is a pretty, pretty nasty thing. It already left that spot within, like, five minutes of sitting here. But we'll see what this thing does overnight to see how bad these oil leaks are. I'm sure I'll end up pulling the motor. So I guess if the motor does come out, feel free to leave suggestions in the comments. I'm not going to go all crazy and spend thousands of dollars but if i can spend like one thousand or less on parts and just kind of freshen up a couple things that'd be pretty sweet so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video